Hello, I'm Matthew Mitchell, convener for Introduction to Programming, and we're going to start by looking at basic data types in Ruby. So some of the main data types you'll deal with are strings. These are just a, a, a characters um, put together to form like a, uh, a, a sequence. Uh, then we have integers, which are whole numbers, and real or floating point numbers, which have a decimal point. And then we have a type called booleans, which represent true or false. So these are all stored in the computer uh, using the thing called variables, whereby we have name a piece of memory in the computer and then we store a value in that piece of memory. And you can also have constants, whereby you name a piece of memory and you store a value in that memory, but the idea is that that value never changes. So a variable is one where you can change the contents and a constant is one where you can't change the contents. So what we're going to do now is have a look at how we can work with these basic data types. So I'm going to suggest you install a, a tool called Visual Studio Code, which you can look up. There are other tools you can use. Uh, this is just one. And other tools of Atom is one other one that we suggest you could use. As you can see, you can download it for the different platforms. So once you do that and install it and run it, then you should see something like this, maybe different color depending on what theme you set it to. And we want to create just a new file. I'm going to call, um, and maybe we want to save that file and give it a, a name. So I'm going to call that you know, demo code dot rb. The dot rb is important because that indicates that it's a Ruby Ruby code, and I'm going to stick that in a folder called Video Demos. Um, and I'm going to use this thing called the terminal here. There are other ways of running Ruby code here, but I'm just going to demonstrate to you the terminal. I, I did. So if we do pwd, we'll see what our current folder is. Uh, we can change up. We can go cd space dot dot. That'll change us up. <clears throat> ls shows us what um, files and folders are in that location and if we want to change back down again I go change directory video demos I press tab and it'll auto complete for me and we can see here we are with our demo code.rb file there so I want to start writing some very simple Ruby code and the first thing I'm going to do is just do um, put string and it's going to be hello so I've got that there I save it using, and then I come down here and I type Ruby demo code dot rb, and I run that code, and what we see is we get the string hello appearing down here. I'll make that a bit bigger. All right, so now I want to put world. So I'm going to have hello and I'm going to have world. Now the question is where does that appear? Does it appear next to here or does it appear on the next line? Well let's have a look and see. So we see hello on one line and then world on the next line. So put string is moving down one line after it prints the text. If we want to get it on the same line then we can do this plus and we probably want to put a space in there, otherwise it'll just be one long word. So let's run that now, save that and run that, and see what we get with that. Now we get hello world on one line. Okay, that's good. Now, so what's happening here is that at the end of put string, it's putting a new line out. We can do that manually ourselves by putting backslash n, the backslash says this is not normal text, this is telling you to do something else, and in this case it's telling it to output a new line. So we'll save that, and we'll run that, and we'll see what happens. So now we get hello, new line world. Okay, so put string by default, we'll put a new line at the end, so there'll be a, new, a hidden new line here that we can't see, and we've put one in ourselves there. So let's get rid of that for now. 
Now, we could do that as a variable. So we could have um, text equals hello, hello world. And then we can go put string text. So let's see what happens there. We get hello world again. So it's taken, we're here we've put a value, which is the string hello world, assigned it to a memory location called text. And then we're saying put string text and it's going to that memory location, retrieving the string and displaying it on the screen. So we can do that with a string type. What about if we want to have a number? x equals 10. And we want to put string x. Let's come down here, save that, run the code. And we see that we get 10 appearing in the console. So here we've created a variable called x. That is, we've allocated a piece of memory, given it the name x, and we've stored in it the value 10. And here we've gone put string x, it's gone and retrieved that value and displayed it on the screen. But something else has happened here. 10 is not text, 10 is a number. So put string effectively converts 10 into a string. Now we'll see the difference of that in a minute. And we'll have a look at some other examples, but let's, let's look at something else here first. Let's say we have y equals five, we can go put string x plus y. Let's see what happens now. So we get 15. So this is not concatenating two strings like before. If you remember before, we went put string hello plus world. That is just appending this string to this string. Yep. In this case, we're adding the 10 and the 5 together. So this is a matter of context. The operator here, which is an addition symbol, when it has a string on either side, concatenates them. When it has a number or an integer on either side, it adds them. So context is important when you're looking at these operators. And obviously, it does this before it does the put string. In other words, it does the addition before it does the put string. So we can see those two things operating now. Let's go control, uh, save it, and then we'll run it. And we see the hello world, where this is concatenated to that. And we see the 15, where the 10 is added to the five. What's the difference? Well, let's say we were to make these into strings like this. And we run that again. So now it's treating these as strings, not as numbers, because they've got the quotation marks around them. What happens now? We get 10 and 5. It puts them out separately. To emphasize this point, let's just put a space there. Yep, <clears throat> we'll run it again. Now we can see more clearly that it's just putting out the 10 and the 5 as strings. It's not adding them because it's not treating them as integers anymore. So that's the difference between strings and integers. An integer will not have quotations around it and it will be treated differently by the machine. But we can, if we wanted to, take these strings and now convert them to an integer. So just remember, this one here, it's treating them as strings. And what we got was 10 space five. Now I'm gonna go two i, which means two integer. Two i, and what do you think is gonna happen here? So I'm, I'm asking the system to convert this from a string to an integer. Two i is short for to an integer, and to do convert y to an integer. So think about what you think might happen there. And we're going to run that. Ah, so now we get the 15 again. It's converting that from a string 10 to an integer 10, and it's converting that from a string space 5 to an integer 5. It's clever enough to take the space out. And then it's adding them together, and then it's putting them out. 
So that's simple output. Now we want to do some input. So we want to have another variable. If we're going to read something in, we need to put it somewhere. So maybe we'll call it name and we'll go get s. Get s means get string. Now we're going to run the code. It prints out what we had had before. I don't see if I save it. Let's run it again. It prints out what we had before and it stops. Notice when I um, haven't saved it that it just finished and the prompt, the terminal prompt came up. Now it's just sitting there waiting for something. It's waiting for us to type something in. This is stopped and it's waiting for get string to, to read something from the terminal. So I'm going to put in there the name. And so then I've typed in Matt and it's actually taken Matt and it's stored it in there. So let's just check that that worked the, um, the way we want it, wanted it to work. So we go put string, um, you entered, and then it's going to be plus name. Yep. And I don't like the way it just hangs there. So let's put string a prompt. Please enter your name. Now we have a better idea of what's going on when that just stops like it did. So we'll run it again. Please enter your name. So I'm going to put Matt. And then it says you entered Matt. Okay. So that's good. Now I'm going to change it to a number. Please enter a number. And I'm going to put, and we'll change that to number. And we'll go you entered number. Okay, so let's run that. Please enter a number, 10. You entered a number, 10. Now the question is, is that 10 a text 10 or is it an actual integer? How is it read that in? Yep. So that's something, a question we want to check. So one way to find out is to try and add that number to another number and see how it works. See if it treats this as an integer or whether it treats us as a string. All right, so let's see what this prints out when I do this. Please enter a number, so I'm gonna put six. Ah, it says I can't convert, um, something, something's gone wrong. So I can't convert an integer, and no, no implicit conversion of an integer into a string. So this is an integer. So it's trying to say, this is a string. So this should be a string and I should be able to connect, concatenate these together, but I can't do that. So we're gonna change this to be two i and see what happens now. Please enter a number six. Now it's saying, well, you've converted that to a number so I can't print it out as a string. Let's try that. Six, all right. So what's happened here is we've read a number as a, and it's come up as a string and now we've converted it to an integer so we can add it to another number because we can't add strings to integers, we need to first make them into integers. So now we have this, what we read has been converted to an integer, and the x, which was already an integer, that gives us the 16. But then we want to concatenate that, or append that as text to this. So we convert the whole thing to a string. The 16 gets converted to a string, and then we can append 16 to this. So that's some basic input and output there. So the last thing I guess we want to do is try and put string a Boolean value. So we might have um, a bool equals true. And we might go put string Boolean is plus a bool. Let's see what happens with that. We've still got to put in our number. 
It says no implicit conversion of true into string. So this is not a string. Of course, if we were to put quotes around it like that, then it would be a string. That will work okay. I think I didn't save it. Let's try again. Yep, there we go. But that's just the string saying true. Whereas here, I've assigned this, which is a keyword. So this is a word that's recognized by the language as having a specific meaning. Yep. And it, in this case, represents the concept of true. So if we want to print that out as a string, once again, we need to convert it to a string. So that's kind of like an integer. It's not a string. True is not a string. It's true. Uh, so And false, and we could also make that false. False would not be a string. It would be false, a separate thing. So we need to ask the system to change true into a string form. Let's see what happens when we do that. Still enter a number. Yeah. So now we get it saying it is true. But that's not the string true. That's what the system does when you ask it to convert the value which represents true into a string form. And it converts it into true. So that's some basic data types in Ruby. Uh, I hope that helps you get started with what we're going to do in the first week. And you might want to play with some of these things yourself so that you start to understand data types and their conversions. All right, thank you very much.